The review is underway in Madison on those million signatures asking for a recall of Governor Scott Walker. The process isn't that simple, though, and Fox 11 is on special assignment. Mark Leland has been looking into the steps needed before any recall election and joins us this morning with a preview. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Rachel. You know, when the recall provisions were actually put into the state constitution many, many years ago, who would have anticipated a million people would sign a petition against a single office holder? But that is what those reviewing the recall petitions against Governor Walker are facing. By state statute, the Government Accountability Board has 31 days to complete its review of recall petition signatures. Not just the million filed against Governor Walker, but the 845,000 in the lieutenant governor's race and another 100,000 or so in four state Senate races. You know, the state law gives us 31 days to do it, and that's just not realistic. So last time we asked for 60 days in order to do it. So that was last year when the GAB so needed to review a mere 200,000 signatures in nine state Senate recall races. The GAB lawyers will be in court later this morning to make their case for even more time this time around. Simply scanning the some 300,000 pages of petitions took nearly a week. Now the GAB will put two sets of eyes on each line. But the scrutiny of the names, signatures and addresses might not be as thorough as you might think. The GAB isn't required to actually verify that a name or an address actually exists. We do expect uh, that this is still a people-driven process just like the election process is. So we start with human judgment with two individuals making that judgment. Other than obvious errors on a petition, clearly made up names and a court order to make reasonable efforts to eliminate duplicates, the job of weeding out ineligible names falls to the incumbent being targeted. We have a uh, massive statewide volunteer effort that will be verifying these signatures. And those incumbent campaigns by law are given just 10 days to make their more thorough review of the signatures. It is expected they too will ask the courts for an extension to give them more time to look over those names, Rachel. So if they are approved, when would there be a recall election? Well, as we pointed out, state law actually calls for 31 days to review and then hold an election. That would be six weeks after that point, which would uh, have been at the end of April. We'll have to see what the court's decision is actually today. And which way does it look like it's going to go? You know, it's interesting. Both the Democrats and Republicans don't agree on this. Uh, they both acknowledge more time is reasonable. Democrats would like an, uh, an election by the end of May. That would allow for 60-day review. Republicans tell me given the number of signatures, the election could easily be pushed off to June or July. And if a primary election is needed in all of this, the general election might not take place until August, some mm. people are saying. All right. Thanks, Mark.